All right. So for the people who don't know who you are, who are you? What do you do? My name is Evan Carmichael, probably best known for either my books or my YouTube channel. And I want to help entrepreneurs believe in themselves more. So why do you want to do that? I think your purpose comes from your pain. I think whatever you struggled with the most in life becomes your calling to try to help other people who are currently suffering with that pain. And so because I struggled so much as an entrepreneur uh, growing up, my purpose for the rest of my life is helping other entrepreneurs not struggle as much as I did. So you, I know you talk about it in your book, but uh, do you want to share about any personal struggles that you had in life or in business? Yeah, the biggest struggle for me was in my first company, I turned down all these high paying jobs to make 300 bucks a month and own 30% of a company and wasn't getting results, man. You know, getting up every day wasn't for lack of effort. We were grinding every day. And I had to say no to my friends and, and people who wanted to hang out. Uh, I told them I was living the entrepreneur life, but really I, I just didn't, the, the 20 bucks I couldn't afford to go out and spend. Um, and again, I was too embarrassed and ashamed to tell them that. So I told them I was busy. Um, and then one thing led to another and we just were struggling. And I told my partner that I quit. And that was the worst day of my life because hearing me say that I quit on something that I cared about, I'm happy to drop lots of stuff that don't serve me, but I cared about this thing and mm -hmm. it wasn't working out. And um, I just woke up the next day and said, I can't quit. I need to at least give it everything I've got, but I have to do something different because the way it's been going, it's not working. Like obviously this is, this path I'm on is not working out. I got to find another way. And that's when I asked myself a super important question, which was who has done this before? Who's built a software business before? And that's when I thought of Bill Gates, who's the first guy that came to mind and started mm -hmm. researching his story, applied his strategies, and, and that's what started making my business some money. Um, and ever since then, I've been, whenever I don't know what to do, I model success. And for people who watch my YouTube channel, there's all these different success stories. You know, the, the path that saves you, whatever you struggled with, the path that got you out of the hole becomes a recipe that you can teach to other people. And so- okay that path of, of modeling success from different entrepreneurs saved me. And now I teach that through my YouTube channel of showcasing all these different entrepreneur success stories to try to make it a little bit easier for people who are starting their companies. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. I've been watching your channel for about six years now and nice. I love it. I love it. So you were, you were there. That's, that's, that puts you in like the first 7,000 subscribers on the channel. Really? Yeah. If it's, you if were... it's six years, yeah, I think I started, yeah, it's like around when I was 19, I uh, came across you, so. Right yeah, so, so, so five years ago, six years ago, I had about 7,000 subscribers and a million views. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah, and now we're right here on. with, I don't know, almost 2 million subscribers and a quarter of a billion views. Jeez, good for you. Good for you, that's awesome. Uh, so how did you get into the software company? I had, uh, I was at university and there were two people I connected with who had a software company and they, they started it and they were the coders. I'm not a, I'm not a coder and it was biotech software and science is my worst subject, but they needed a business person to, to help. And so I thought, okay, let me give it a shot. You know, I would rather know and fail than not know. So let me, let me try. And they cut me in for 30% of the company okay. and said, we're not making anything. Like we can pay you 300 bucks a month. That's, 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 that's the draw, but you get 30% equity. So when we build and sell, you know, that, that's the upside. And, um, I just started while I was in university, I started it and it was really just not wanting to live with regret, not wanting to be 95 and look back and say, you know, I wish I tried that startup company. I didn't know if I would win or not. It was probably a pretty low chance of having success being in a business that I knew zero about. Um, but I just, I just had to know. I had to know. I had to know if I had it in me or not before going down the more corporate path. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so you were talking about your YouTube channel a little bit. Like, how did you get into that? It started as uh, two things. One, I wanted to share the stories of the entrepreneurs that I had learned from. And so my first video was on Walt Disney and, the, and what you can learn from his success. I'm a visual learner. I'm a visual guy. So mm -hmm. I love, 
I love being able to see the thing. Like even, even this, even this interview here, the fact that I can see you makes it better for me. Yeah, um, totally. For, for whatever reason, you know, I, I'm not an audio guy and, and I can read if I have to, but I'd much rather watch video. And so mm -hmm. when I went to YouTube at that time, that was 10 years ago. That first video was, was April, 2009. Um, there wasn't much content out there at all for entrepreneurs that was visual. So I thought I would make it and hopefully it would serve some people who were kind of like me. There wasn't an ambition to try to build a massive channel and being a YouTuber wasn't even a thing at the time. It was just, I want to, I want to create some value for the entrepreneur mm -hmm. for other people who wanted to learn like me visually that plus people were asking me questions. I'd sold my business, had some success and people wrote in asking me questions and, and it's, it's humbling knowing that, you know, your opinion means something that might help somebody else out. And I thought, you know, instead of spending 30 minutes writing out this email, why not just make a video and I could answer that person's question, send them the video and hopefully somebody else could learn from it too. I didn't expect, you know, millions of people to watch it. Just maybe them and a and hundred other people might learn from it. And yeah. I would send back the email with a link to a video instead of a long written out form. So that was the start, man. It was just an experiment. I think people need to test more. Uh, I didn't have grand plans or an ambition to, to be a massive success on YouTube. It was just an experiment. I had an idea, you do something with it and you see where it goes. Awesome. I love it. Um, so like, do you have like three rules or three, you know, pieces of advice you could give someone who is starting a YouTube channel or any other business? I would say first, number one, you have to believe in yourself more. That idea came to you for a reason. You have great ideas. You are a genius at something and you have to go off and find it and, and believe in it. So if you're starting a YouTube channel or you're starting a business, believe that you can, you can bring value. Believe that your message means something. Believe that you can create something that will help. Even if at the start, you don't know what you're doing. You know, so number two would be like expect to suck at the beginning. And that's, that's really hard. If you're starting a YouTube channel, for example, and you know what a good YouTube channel looks like because you've watched so many, and then you think, well, I can make that. And then you start and you realize, oh, I can't actually do that. I got to suck. Yeah. Your first video should suck. Your first product should suck. Your first podcast, your first interview, all of it should suck because it's your first time doing it. Mm -hmm. If you're great the first time, that means you should have started four years ago. <laughs> Right? Like you're supposed yeah. to suck at the beginning. That's how anything works. It's great. So people expect to be great out of the gate. And then when they suck, then they stop. And that's the thing that hurts people. Like the reason why my channel has grown so much over the past five, six years is because I went and I was doing three videos a day, every single day, like putting out the content, being consistent, building up the audience and, and sucking a lot along the way and slowly learning and getting better. So believe in your idea, expect the suck. And then three would be the, just the consistency. Like I have won because every day I get up and I do the work. I'm not the most talented. I'm not the smartest, but I did it every single day, mm -hmm. no matter what, you know, I, uh, I broke my neck a couple months ago in two spots, had a concussion and was still making videos. Yeah. You were traveling the States with a broken neck. Yeah, I did a, I did a 90 day tour which already is kind of crazy. Like rock bands don't even tour for that long. Uh, 23 city stops and two thirds of the way through with a month left, I broke my neck in two spots, had a concussion, three staples in my head, um, compressed my spine, whole bunch of stuff. And uh, dude, in, in, in the hospital, I did an, a live stream. Like every day, every day making content, no matter what. Now, is it my best stuff? No. But, but you're still shooting up and showing up. Yeah, every day you got to show up. Every day you need to show up, whether that's for your YouTube channel or your business or just for life, man. Every day, are you proud of your effort? It wasn't my best result, but it was my best effort. Like I tried more then than even now than waking up and having a normal day back here in my hometown of Toronto. Like I had to really push myself hard to get going. And I think that's when you actually build your self-respect and self-confidence. Doing it, it, like it doesn't count until you do it when it's difficult. Doing it when it's easy is easy. That's fine. Anybody can do that. It's not until it's hard that it actually counts. Yeah. You know, I thought that was like 
sorry that you broke your neck, but you like didn't cancel. You were still going. It's like, man, this like I admire that. Like somebody with a broken neck, like most people would just give up, go back home, and pour me in. You were still suiting up and showing up, and I thought that was really cool. Uh, f- for the circumstances, like not cool that you broke your neck, but yeah, I'm pumped, dude. No, I'm pumped that I broke my neck and that I got. <laughs> Because we very rarely get the chance to show ourselves what we're actually made of. Because mm-hmm. I'm never going to throw my head against a wall and, and break my neck purposely. Yeah. I'm not going to. Like, that, that would be stupid. You have to have something messed up to do that. But it happened. So, so life is coming for all of us in a lot of different ways. When life punches you in the face, what do you do? Do you complain and, and whine and, and go in? Or do you say, this is the best. Like, this is actually my chance to see what I'm made of. And so I love it. it was great. It was a great inspiration for a lot of people. Maybe you liked it. And, and a bunch of other people were saying, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just tired and I'm not working, but here's Evan with his broken neck. Like, what's my excuse? That right. wasn't the intent that was for me. Like, I just wanted to see how far I could go. Like, could I actually finish my tour? Everybody said, stop, don't worry about it. Go home, you know, do the smart thing. It's okay. If I made it three more cities and then that was my, my limit, cool. But I hit my limit. I wanted to know where was my limit. And I ended up being able to make it through the whole thing. And that just takes you to a new level. Like when you go through something difficult, you come out a different person. And mm-hmm. then that allows you to help other people. Like you've taken another step on that staircase and that allows you to reach down and bring people up to where you're at. I love that. I love it. You know, I, uh, that's one reason why I started this podcast is because we all go through struggles in life mm-hmm. and, you know, I've had my own struggles. I've been homeless, drug addiction, whatever. Um, but it doesn't stop me. It doesn't stop me from, you know, tr- at least trying to be better. Um, I had a mobile detailing business that failed, but like, I, I just didn't give up. Um, I'm still, you know, trying to re innovate and try something different and show people that it's okay to have insecurities. It's okay to ha- go through these life struggles, but what are you going to do about it? Mm-hmm. Everyone goes through struggles and there's successful people who've gone through struggles. So um, one, your channel has been a huge inspiration to me and many others like it. Uh, yeah, no, thank you. So what's your message to the world? I, I want, I want people to believe in themselves more. Like I want people to actually feel like they have, I like to say everybody has Michael Jordan level talent at something. I believe okay. that. Like, I think, I think Michael Jordan is great and is a great talent, but I think that's, everybody has that. Not that everybody needs to be a basketball player, but you could be the Michael Jordan, the Michael, like the best at something. You're, you're not meant to be homeless, right? Like you're, you're a genius at something. And, and most people settle for a job that they hate. Like 95% of America wakes up and drives to a job that they hate. Mm-hmm. I, I think you could be great at something, but, but you have to go, one, find it. You have to find the thing. And then two, you have to believe in yourself enough to chase it down because chances are the thing that you could be great at has nothing to do with where you came from. Like it's not what your parents want you to do. It's not what your community wants you to do. It's something wild and totally different. Like you mm-hmm. told your parents, hey, I'm starting a podcast. You're like, what? A what? You're doing a what? Yeah. It's weird. Awesome. That, that's, that's part of what breaking out looks like. And so I want people to, to find that thing, and then I want them to believe themselves enough to chase it down. So why, why believe? I think everybody has one word, a one word most important core value. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's I know you talk about it in your book. Yeah, that, that was my first book. Um, I think when you figure out what it is that you stand for as a human, what your, your most important core value is, then you can design a life around it and attract more of it in. So my one word is believe. I try to create believe every day with the content on my uh, YouTube channel, with the books that I write, this interview. You know, like I want to I wanna spread more believe here. I may not be doing it. Like I may suck. I may let myself down, but it's, it's always the intention. And if that's your intention every day is I want to create more X in the world today, 
that if you wake up and do that every day, most days you'll be able to actually make that happen. And you'll, and you'll develop the skills to make that happen better each time. Okay. I like it. I like it. Thank you for sharing that. So uh, a little bit ago, you were talking about waking up and doing the work. When you wake up, do you have a morning routine and what is it? Yeah. I, I, so for me, I go through what I call the five S's. The first is sing. So I wake up and I put on music that makes me want to sing. Okay. I wake up and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm tired, dude. I'm tired. I got, you know, lines on my face from the pillow and stuff in my eyes. And, and most people will then wake up like an accident or, or turn on their phone and start responding to other people's emergencies. Or if you're putting on music, you put on music of how you currently feel as opposed to music of how you want to feel. So we've all, we all have music that if this song came on, it would make you start bouncing and make you start singing along. You just couldn't help it because like, it's that song. There's no mm -hmm. one song for me. It's something for you. It's something else. Somebody else is something else, but put that song on or put that band on. If you started your day with moving, it's music is the fastest way to change your state. It's the fastest way to get from one spot of emotion to another. And so you might've had the greatest day of all time today, but then tomorrow you're going to wake up and you're starting over again. And so I start with singing. Next is sun, so I get outside. So I, I go with my wife, we walk, we get some, I don't know, something, just something about being outside, getting some sun on me that just lightens my mood and makes me more positive and more optimistic and ready for the day. Um, three is then sore. And so you need to figure out the thing, the thing that makes you sore. What makes you come alive? What makes you feel bold, confident, powerful? This is the most important part of my morning routine, right? That if there's five S's, but that's, that, that one, if I only to do one, that's the most important part. For me, I need to think about somebody that I helped yesterday and then channel a message to share. And I usually put on my Instagram in the morning. I need to think about someone I've helped and then share it. Because a lot of what I do, and, and you too, you're sitting there, you know, and I'm in my home office, you're in your home, you know, you're, you're creating content that then spreads around the world, but it's hard to feel the tangible impact of that. And so I need to remind myself that the work I do is important, that today becomes important, and that yesterday, instead of just thinking, oh, another 300,000 people have watched my videos, that's too, that's too generic, but like this person, this one person I helped, whether it's a comment or whether it's um, somebody that I actually helped on a, on, a, on a live session, but I helped one person, and then I share a message. So whatever you need to do to help make you soar every morning, I think it's important because if you started your day and did the thing that made you feel bold, confident, unstoppable, if you felt that way every morning, your life would be dramatically different one year from today. Um, then I get to sweat. So usually some kind of workout. Uh, I'm still super light on what I can do because of my injury, uh, but slowly getting, getting stronger and then scare. So it's something that scares you. So usually I'll hop into a cold shower afterwards and, I always hate getting to a cold shower, but I feel great coming out of it. Yes, uh, yes. So, so those are the five S's, but again, sore is the most important. And for different people, it's different things. Like maybe for you, it's meditation, or maybe you need to hang out with your cat outside or talk to your plants. Like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Whatever the thing is that makes you come alive, do that every single day with intention instead of waking up like an accident. Yeah, yeah. Meditation is... Uh... I, lead, I like to do five minutes of meditation in the morning and at night, at least, right. just to get me centered and, and just really reflect on my day. Uh, <clears throat> so you do everyone else's 10 rules to success. What's yours? So I was resistant to doing my own for a long time. Um, and then my team and my fans for my birthday, I want to say two years ago, uh, maybe it's longer, did, did one, did one for me. And they, they sorted through all my videos and put it together. Um, and, and since then, we've done a few variations, even, even last night. I guess I don't know when this podcast is going live, but last night we posted uh, my top 10 rules for success, taken from my various clips that I put up. Um, I think at the core, the, it's still a lot of the advice that we talked about. Like you have to believe in yourself. You have mm -hmm. to believe that it's possible because without belief, it doesn't matter. I think there's a lot of people who are listening to this show who have great ideas where, where dummies are off making money from your ideas. 
with, with less intention, with less desire, with less of uh, uh, wanting to make an impact, and they're, they're winning. Dummies from your idea because they just started and they believed in themselves while you're still thinking and planning and tinkering and creating, you know, the Excel sheets and writing down the notes and it has to be perfect. They're winning and they're making money. Like that could be you. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Right. So, um, a lot of my messages I'll, I'll end up repeating just with different stories because I want people to, to get it. I want people to hear it and, I want to try to be that source of belief for people. There's a lot of people who write to me and say, you're the only one who believes in me. Um, one, that's sad because I don't even know you, you know, and, and to have people comment and say that. Uh, but two, I also take that as a big responsibility in that I, I need to make sure that every day there's new stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, people are depending on what I do. People are depending on the content I put up as a part of their daily rituals. And um, I take that very seriously. And I want to make sure that I'm creating the content that helps them. Awesome. Love it. Uh, so what do you do like in your free time? What are your hobbies? Um, I think everything is intentional time. Uh, so even free time is intentional time. Uh, so if I was look at that, I'd look at salsa dancing. Uh, I own the largest dance studio in North, in probably North America and Canada for sure teaching people how to salsa dance is how I met my wife. So we love looking up salsa clubs. Um, okay. League of Legends, I'm a big fan. Uh, TSM is my team. We didn't make it to the MSI recently, so I'm bummed about that. But the next season starts this weekend, so hopefully we're going to get some victories under our belt. Uh, I've transitioned a lot from, from – I used to be a hardcore like Blue Jays baseball fan. I've transitioned to eSports and League of Legends. Um, what else? And then every Saturday as part of my routine is that's a fun day. So it's me and my wife. I'll plan the whole day as a surprise for her. We'll do some new food in the city cause she loves food. And then I'll plan, um, you know, a hiking trip or a festival in the city or some new thing to check out. And it's, it's a no work mode, but I wouldn't classify it as free time because okay. It's, it's intentional. Like this time I'm using to connect with my wife and this is what we're doing all day long. If I had free time, that's not intentional. Like I like to design a life that will lead me to having success okay. and success is habits. So how much time do I want to spend with my wife? How much time do I want to spend in my business, mention my team, all of that business and personal is all factored into my calendar. And then I live it free time for me would be, if my wife decides on a Friday night that she wants to go off and, and do something with her friends. And so now suddenly I have a Friday night open to myself to do whatever I want. 80% chance I'm working. 20% chance or maybe 10% chance I'm playing League of Legends. 10% chance I'm going to call up some buddies, see if they want to hang out. Okay. If I magically, if you magically gifted me three hours a week, probably I'm spending it working. Okay. I love it. Wait, like, you enjoy work. what you do. Yeah. 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 You're helping others. You're being productive. You love what you do. And obviously it's working out for you. Yeah. And, and how much time you spend on different things. I think we judge each other's schedule and calendar too much. Like you look at somebody else's life and, and you think that's either the best or the worst. You have to define what balance looks like for you. What does balance look like for you? How much time do you want to spend sleeping? How much time do you want to spend working? How much time do you want to spend with your mom, you know, with your wife? Like mm -hmm. maybe you can call your mom for an hour every morning. Awesome. Schedule that in. You could do it. People listening could do it. I think the biggest problem isn't, isn't the blocks of time. I think it's people are distracted too much. It's, not, it's, it's unintentional time. We're, we're bouncing between tasks too much. You're spending too much time just scrolling through Facebook and Instagram. You know, you're, you're not actually being productive. And so before worrying about, I think people default to like, well, I need to wake up an hour earlier. Before worrying about giving up sleep, I would look at auditing your current calendar and saying, did I crush yesterday? Like, was every minute awake? Did I use mm -hmm. that to further my goals? Whether that's personal, like spend time with your wife or, or business, spend time making my career better. That's, that's why I don't really have a lot of free time because 
I'm spending time when I'm with my wife, I'm with my wife. It's not, it's not free time. Like don't, don't call me when I'm with my wife. That's, mm -hmm. that's intentional time that we booked off together. When you are like having time with your wife, do you like put your phone on airplane mode? Do you turn off the notifications? So there's like no interruptions. So I don't have a cell phone number, so you can't oh. reach me. Okay. There are no notifications at all that happen anyway. So it's, it's regardless if I'm with my wife or, or here, like now talking to you, I don't have my phone ringing. I don't have notifications pinging. Um, so I've designed my life so that I can be, all I'm thinking about is you and this interview. I'm not okay. thinking about what I'm doing next or, or what I'm eating for dinner tonight or anything else. And so uh, I think, I don't think, I'm a weird duck. I don't think everybody needs to get rid of a cell phone. I haven't used a phone number in, in 10 years. Um, wow. Yeah, it just allows me to stay present, man. Regardless of what I'm doing, whether that's with, if with my wife or in business. Because I think, I think a big chunk of the problem is why you end up having to eat into your personal time to do your business is because you're not focused when you're supposed to be doing your business. Because when you're supposed to be doing your business stuff, you're getting distracted by notifications and everything else that comes in and phones. Like when was the last time you were happy that somebody called you on, on an unscheduled call? Like, right. Not much. It's, it's a yeah. distraction. And, yeah. and even if you don't, even if you don't, pick up, you're looking at the phone and you say, what does that person want? Which distracts you from doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing. So every minute, every second counts. Mm -hmm. And so if you're, if you're calling me, you're robbing 20 seconds of my time, but then also it could be 20 minutes of my time to get back to the headspace I was in before that interruption. So yeah. I like running a no interruption life. Right on. Well, um, thank you for your time. I definitely appreciate you taking the time uh, and doing this call. One, it's an honor. I can't believe I'm talking to you right now. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, and you know, thank you. Do you have any last words? I love it, man. Just, just make it count. Like make today count. Today matters. Like before you put your head on your pillow tonight, this has to matter. I, I go in thinking I'm making something for my grandkids. Like my grandkids are going to watch this interview. That's my intention going in. So bringing that level of importance to the work that you do. The work you do matters. Today matters. It's not just about hitting some goal in five years. Like now, today, th this is your chance to do something amazing. And if you took that approach every single day, you may not hit it every day, but I guarantee you, you one year from now, you'll be a totally different person. Awesome. Love it. Well, thank you again. You have a great day and it was a pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. See ya.